to the right. Notice I'm only bumping my hand on the lead rope. You see that? What did I just teach my mule to do? Drop his head, go around in a circle, watch where he's going. Not this. Notice though that the nose says to the mule, when I pick up on that come along rope, you better listen to that come along rope. And notice I didn't pull the mule around. It was not important that the mule went around. It was important that the mule went as the little bit of pressure was on the lead rope. Okay, so let's go back again. I come underneath the neck. Notice before he was going, what? What am I supposed to do here, you know? Go around behind his rear end. I come up and I take my rope and I play the tune. Here's my hands. And I bump. There's the head, I let go, I bump. There's the head, I let go, I bump, I let go. There we go. Now I just take up the slap, heads down, boom. Guess what else has happened to this animal? He is now, since his head is down, he's rounding out his back. If his head is elevated, he's hollowing out his back. So I'm taking the spine from being this way, and when he elevates his head, now it's this way. Now where's it going to rub? In the wrong places. Now we're creating the old arthritis situation coming in. All right? So you got to think, when a mule elevates his head, when a horse or a donkey elevates his head, it hollows out their back. So when you're riding them, when you're leading them, you want it down. Top of the wither, top of the head framed out. Back's rounded out. Hind end's pushing, and we're driving off our hindquarters, and the front end's going along with it. When the head is elevated, the back is hollowed out, the mule is pulling with his front legs. He's pulling with his front legs, and his back end just kind of follow along. You don't have your drive wheels back here pushing them off, all right? So I would do this three times, okay? Notice the second time was just a teeny bit better than the first time. And I come back. And I play the tune. Look here. Even quicker on that third time. Hardly had to touch him. All I had to do was feel the rope getting tight and loose, tight and loose, and I would take up the slack of cord. Didn't have to look at my animal. See, that's what you want to do. You want to develop your hands in such a way. Another way you can get them off your, in your space is hold on to the nose and move them back. You want to develop your hands in such a way that when you lightly feel that touch, Give this a feel. Stand right there. Now watch my hand. You see this hand? You see right now, you feel that pressure? Yeah. All right, pull against me. Yeah, okay. Now, I change my hand. Two fingers here. Change my hand now. Pull against me. Okay, what was the difference? I changed my hand to where I could roll my wrist. You got it? I could roll my wrist, and as I do, I'm telling the mule, you're getting ready to come forward. And even though she pulls against me, here, she can pull against me. Go ahead. Go ahead, pull against me. See, I can't pull her forward. Go ahead. But if I change and do it this, this and this is lightness, when she goes and pull, go ahead, pull against me, as she does this, and I butt my hands, she comes forward. See the difference? Can I do this with a rope halter? Yes, once I've spent time with the come along hitch. Notice that from a distance, I've got full control of my animal. Let me fix that. Notice the feet didn't move, but the nose got into place. I told the feet earlier with a couple sharp wraps, don't move your feet. See, anybody can move feet. You'll hear a lot of horse trainers say, well, let him keep going until he stops moving his feet. Well, I'm sorry, if the Grand Canyon's right here, I really want to stop before I go off this thing, yeah. right? I don't want him to move his feet. You hear horse trainers do this stuff all the time. They say, all right, emergency stop. Disengage the hindquarters, pull up on one rein, and they go around in a circle. All right, that looks really good out here on flat ground. Let's go to the Grand Canyon, straight off here, straight up here. Oh, one more problem I forgot about. I got five mules behind me. How can I go around in a circle, horse trainer? You see? You're going to learn how to stop straight. You're going to learn how to think straight. Okay? 
So when it comes down to their nose, do you all see how the training comes in place? Right now I'm teaching ground type. It, it, you, see the, you see the thing? Not only am I teaching halter training, but it's ground type. In the United States, in, in, the forest state of, in the forest services, you cannot tie to a tree unless it's emergency. If a forest ranger comes along and finds you tied to a tree, you're going to buy that tree. Because most of the time they've pawed it and they've done dead the roots or they've bitten on it or something like that. If there's an emergency, you can tie to a tree on, on forest land. Okay? Now in Arizona, show me what I've got to tie to. Rarely. I can't tie to a choya cactus. You know? So all of my mules have to be ground tied like this. And at the ranches and stuff, we all, hey, at the ranches and stuff, we, we do a lot of things like this. We make bets as to whose animal is going to move first. So the nice thing about the come along hitch, this is waxed. You'll get a feel for it. The nice thing about the wax is it helps it from climbing up the nose. Two strands, so it's just heavy enough that it does good. All right? It's a wonderful tool. All of my animals, when I start everything, I don't care if they're a trained animal and they come here, they're not trained anymore, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I don't care what they've done or how they do it. I start everybody right here just like this. Come along, Hitch. Now, notice when I ask my mule to come up. I pick up on the lead rope. I put it down. Pressure's off. I pick up on it. Pressure's on. Pressure's off. So it's really easy for them to ground tie when they start thinking about how this come along hitch goes. Now look how this works. Notice here, pull pressure. It's right in this little notch and around the nose and underneath the chin. Three key places to communicate to your mule, all right? When I pick up on it, the first thing that happens is I touch the nose. Second thing that happens is I touch the chin, the nerves underneath here. Third thing is up here on the pole. Do you see the pressure, the little tap right there? So they've got a chance to ask, tell, demand. Do you all see that? Threes. They've got a chance to respond correctly to it. So by, do, by using the come along rope, and by the way, never ever tie up solid, hard and fast. If this animal pulls back on this, he'll break the cartilage on his nose. Now, I'm going to lead a pack mule to, to, to packing. I'm riding along with, with this come along hitch. And I'm riding along, all of a sudden the mule gets too close to me. I wiggle the rope, the mule hesitates, and then I get my extra length. Wiggle my rope, the mule hesitates, now I gain extra length. Wiggle the rope, the mule hesitates, now I got extra length. Now I can go around my switchback. And as I go around the switchback, the mule is going to follow the pressure of the lead rope. And then I'm going to take up on the slack. You see how it followed that switchback? The switchback wasn't there, but what was the mule doing? It was responding to the weight of that lead rope. I knew which way to go. He knew if he came to me, it would take the pressure off. If he goes away from me, it's going to put the pressure on. You see? So these tools, folks, will not only take an honest mule, Take an honest meal and make them even more honest and make them more thinking to help you out.